Hello everybody, this is Dr. Ray Fournier and welcome to week four, um, unit four of ethics. We're going to be talking about the ethical issues in the treatment of persons with co-occurring disorders, the record keeping, and HIPAA. Specifically, when we start with, oh, we'll start with the last one and then work our way um, back to the front. HIPAA is the Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act. It was created specifically to maintain the privacy of patients seeking medical treatment. Now, because substance abuse treatment falls um, many times in the medical world, um, things like detox, psychiatric treatment of individuals with substance abuse issues, then HIPAA applies to us. Also, as a counseling um, situation, it usually applies to us as well, aside and along with all of the other confidentiality issues that counselors have. Um, I'm going to be including this uh, with your week so that you could read up on HIPAA. HIPAA has lots and lots and lots of rules of how information needs to be stored. Now, it gets very confusing with HIPAA, mainly because um, if we're working with somebody with co-occurring disorders, it is an individual, with both substance abuse um, needs and mental health needs. So in a treatment facility that only services people with substance abuse issues, um, the need, um, you know, you're going to need to refer out any kind of psychiatric treatment. Well, that's where um, confidentiality gets a little bit muddied. You know, who's, you know, you start asking the questions of whose client is it? Um, how do we maintain confidentiality when we have clients outside of our, um, our agency seeking treatment that we referred them to? Are we, are we supposed to get information from the people that we refer them to? How do we do this? How do we make sure that everyone is protected in this situation? Um, these are the things we're going to be talking about. In the SAMHSA store, where they talk about people with co-occurring disorder, this is the only mention of ethics in the whole um, tip for co-occurring disorders. Ethics. That basically you need to be aware of ethics, which is kind of weak. Um, one of the things that is mentioned in this article about the program implications with people with substance abuse issues and mental disorders um, is the need to educate people of the very sticky um, ethical issues involved in treating these individuals. You know, that because we're straddling two different worlds, um, essentially. You know, uh, the substance abuse world has, in treatment has been very separate from the mental health world. Um, so much so that, you know, there isn't a lot of, um, how's the word I'm looking for? There isn't a lot of consensus on, you know, who should be treating what in terms of substance use and mental health issues. Um, the amount of education required of a counselor in substance uh, treatments and things like that is far different than mental health. Um, and it's just basically a different kind of situation. So those of you, like, like you professionals, will be really straddling both worlds. As mental health professionals that happen to specialize in addiction, you are going to have a different way of looking at things. Um, and I strongly suggest that you become very proficient in understanding the ethical um, stickiness between these two worlds. Because, as I've said many times before, 65% of the clients you're going to see, at least 65%, are going to have mental health issues. All right, so I will see you Thursday at 9 p.m. so we can continue discussing this. And that's it. If you need any... If you have any questions or you need any help with anything, email me or text me, call me, whatever you need. Okay, see you soon. Bye-bye.